The story begins with a man named Tomosibi Orojin talking to himself in front of a mirror, mentioning that he's a band member and has been single all his life. Shortly after, his mother interrupts, calling him for breakfast, but Orojin declines. Elsewhere, two intoxicated men are inside a temple when they hear a noise. One of them mentions the myth of Han Ki being trapped, but his friend dismisses it. Suddenly, the box opens, frightening them both, and they hastily flee. Legend has it that Han Ki, a figure of steadfast resolve, would not retreat even upon finding his heart. During the Samori era, there was a person who discarded their sword and helmet, symbolizing pure Han Ki. This figure would engage in deep meditation until reaching enlightenment. Following this, a young man named Asamine Matakara is showed challenging a member of the Siguma squad to a duel. It turns out that the Minato Kai and Siguma squad are vying for top position in the school. Not long after, Arajin attends the school, but his teacher notices his lack of interest in fading. When enters his classroom, Arajin noticed the absence of female students. He then introduces himself and finds a seat next to a beautiful woman named Jean Mahoro. Hearing her name, Arajin imagine about their potential future together, when their names combined as Jin Arajin, sensing destiny. At the same time, Matakara finally manages to defeat some of the members of the Siguma squad. As class ends, Mahoro invites Arajin to walk home with her, to which he eagerly agrees. Mahoro then waits for him at the gate. However, when Arajin is about to follow her, he encounters Kakeru, who tries to trip him. Kakeru then asks up Arajin's comfort at school, but Arajin, who is in a hurry, doesn't respond and hurries away. Shortly after, another student named Komao blocks Arajin's path and invites him to play first. Hearing this, Arajin trying to deceive both of them and makes his escape. However, he accidentally collides with Matakara while being chased by Komao. At that moment, Matakara recognizes Arajin as his childhood friend and is surprised to see him at the school because they haven't met in five years. Matakara then informs his friends about their past friendship and Arajin's strength, but they are skeptical. Matakara then invites Arajin to play baseball, but he declines because he has some important business to attend. Shortly after, Arajin leaves the school gate, but he doesn't spot Mahoro, so he heads straight home. When he rides home, his mother suddenly asks him if he had met a beautiful girl at school. Seeing Arajin's expression after hearing her questions, his mother realizes that he has met someone. After realizing that her favorite drama will be airing soon, his mother immediately tells Arajin to watch over the shop. Meanwhile, at the Sigma Army headquarters, a man is seen apologizing to Marito for being defeated by Matakara. He also praised Matakara as a good person, but Marito reacted violently by kicking the man in the face. On the other hand, in his room, Arajin is seen reflecting on his meeting with Matakara and remembering their childhood. At that time, Matakar was being bullied while Arajin could only watch from afar, unable to intervene. The following day, Arajin returns to school, but he feels disappointed when he doesn't see Mahoro in class. During lunch break, Arajin feels embarrassed by his lunch, which resembles that of a kindergarten student. But suddenly, Mahoro compliments his lunch, calling it cute. As they eat together, Arajin asks Mahoro why she skipped class earlier. Mahoro admits that she just wanted to skip, and Arajin also apologizes to her for not being able to go home with her yesterday due to an unexpected encounter with his friend. Mahora doesn't mind and expresses her desire to be friends with Arajin, which he agrees to. Shortly after, Mahoro asks Arajin if he has plans for Saturday, making him wonder if she's asking him out. Just then, Manakara calls Arajin, while his two friends still doubt about his strength, bravery, and coolness. At that time, Komao spotting Mahoro and Arajin together, informs Matakara about it. Suddenly, Kakeru mentions an upcoming holiday and an old tradition at Ichizu High School that they will see. The next day, Arajin is seen buying something for Mahoro. He then approaches by Komao and Kakeru, inviting him somewhere. Shortly after, Arajin finds himself at an amusement park, where Kakeru apologizes for the accident before and it invites him to make peace. However, their peace is interrupted by a group of people dressed in white approaching. Kakeru quickly grabs Komo and leaves Arajin behind. The group then confronts Arajin, realizing he doesn't belong to either the Minato Kai or Siguma squad. They question his presence in their territory, to which Arajin responds that he's just a transfer student. Not long after, Arajin is seen fleeing in his underwear, revealing to Komo and Kakeru 
that he's not as tough as Mata Kar described. Despite being chased, Arajin manages to take refuge in a temple, visibly frightened. Spotting a toy gun nearby, Arajin grabs it and points it at his pursuers, who laugh it off. He accidentally fires the toy, knocking himself unconscious when it rebounds and hits his head. Upon waking, Arajin feels like the bullet was still lodged in his head and tries to remove it. Suddenly, smoke appears, and a red jenny named Senya appears, offering to grant his wish. However, Senya notices that Arajin is a coward. Shortly after, Arajin realized that Senya is a mythical being after seeing him levitate. Arajin then expressed his desire not to remain single. At the same time, Komau and Kakeru discuss Arajin's nature, with Matakar revealing that Arajin is actually kind-hearted and dislikes violence. Later, Arajin is seen engraving Ahoro's name on the item he purchased earlier. At that moment, Senya notices this and inquires if it's for the woman Arajin likes. Arajin then clarifies that the stone serves as a lasting symbol of his affection for Mahoro. On Saturday, Arajin meets Mahoro, still with the bullet in his head. Despite this, his mother notices his tidy appearance and realizes he's going on a date, urging him not to be shy. Arriving at their destination, Arajin asks Senya not to disturb him while he was with Mahoro. Shortly after, Mahoro arrived and they sat together in the park while enjoying ice cream. At that moment, Mahoro expresses her happiness about Arajin transferring to her school. Suddenly, Senya prompts Arajin to give Mahoro the stone, indicating it's time for Arajin to confess his love. However, Arajin suddenly feels the urge to use the toilet and hurriedly find for a public restroom. Upon returning, he apologizes to Mahoro, who doesn't seem bothered. Without delay, Arajin presents his stone to Mahoro, revealing her name engraved on it. As Arajin is about to express his feelings to Mahoro, a group led by Marido, the leader of Siguma Squad, approaches them. Arajin appears ready to take Mahoro away. But Marido intervenes, disclosing that Mahoro is his younger sister, much to Arajin's astonishment. At the same time, Kakeru alerts Matakara about Arajin surrounded by Siguma Squad. Worried, Matakara rushes to help Arajin. Meanwhile, Arajin is kicked and beaten by Marido. Witnessing Arajin's helplessness, Senya feels that helping him would be futile. However, Arajin's refusal to give up prompts Senya to reconsider. Senya then urges Arajin to express his desire, to which Arajin responds that he still wishes not to remain single and Senya promptly joins Arajin. Arajin suddenly manages to withstand Marido's kick and retaliates by delivering a powerful punch to his stomach, sending him flying. Witnessing this, Matakara realizes Arajin's punch resembles that of a Hanki. Senya then expresses concern to Arajin about his peculiar wish, urging him to aspire for strength instead. Marido swiftly rises and delivers another kick, causing Arajin to fall into the lake. Matakara sees this immediately help him. Realizing that Arajin's punch left a mark on his body, Marido decided to invite Arajin to join the Siguma squad gang. Lat not long after, Arajin wakes up and finds Matakara beside him, and informs Arajin of his successful blow to Marido. Concerned about Mahoro's well-being, Arajin learns from Matakara that Mahoro is likely safe at home. Arajin then realizes the consequences of his actions upon realizing that he had fought Mahoro's brother. On the other hand, Kakeru is seen purchasing medicine for Arajin as instructed by Matakara. However, he notices a member of the Siguma squad gang lurking near Matakara's house and promptly gives chase. Meanwhile, inside the house, Matakara tells Arajin that he lives in a bathhouse run by his brother and asks if he still remembers the stone he once gave him. Arajin, feeling the need to return home, declines further conversation. On his way home, Senya suddenly appears and urges Arajin to confront Marido once more. Hearing this, Arajin declines the invitation prompting Senya to attempt to drag him back to their previous location. However, they find only Kakeru there, who questions their presence. During the encounter, Kakeru accidentally touches the bullet lodged in Arajin's head, leading Senya to communicate with him. Startled by someone suddenly speaking, Kakeru looked frightened. Later that evening, Arajin reflects on his recent encounter in the shower, realizing that his punch against Marido had unleashed a newfound strength within him. Senya reveals to him that he is a true Hanki and by joining forces, Arajin's punches would become immensely powerful. 
However, this power could only be utilized once due to their partial fusion. Senya then suggests Aurajin could achieve even greater strength if their souls and bodies fully merged. Their conversation is interrupted when Arajin's mother enters the bathroom, asking about his date. Meanwhile, at the Sigma headquarters, Mahoro is deeply concerned about her brother. But Marito insists that she should not come. At the same time, Chabasari arrives and immediately requests a private conversation with Marito. Chabasari informs Marito that his friend named Tut had followed Arajin, who was brought by Mathakar the previous day and asks whether Marito intends to invite Arajin to join the Siguma squad, despite Arajin's close relationship with Mathakara. Marito also admitted that he was considering the possibility of inviting Mathakara to join the squad. Hearing this, Jabasiri appears upset by this revelation, as he was supposed to be Marito's successor. The following day, Arajin arrives at school, only to find members of the Siguma squad waiting for him having realized that Arajin was the one who fought against Marito the day before. Senya then observes Arajin's newfound popularity and urges him to defeat them all. Arajin reacts with frustration and yells at Senya, causing the Siguma squad members to look frightened. At the same time, Marito appears and immediately pursues Arajin. On the other hand, Kakeru advises Matakara against associating with Arajin, suggesting that he may be influenced by an evil spirit. However, Matakara considers inviting Arajin to join the Minato Kai, and the chairman of the organization expresses a desire to meet Arajin. Upon hearing this, Kakeru fails to understand Matakara's perspective on Arajin, but Matakara believes that Arajin's punch resembles that of a Hanki. The following day, Marito approaches Matakara, asking about Arajin's class. Matakara then questions Marito's intentions, asking about Arajin's class to which Marito reveals his plan to invite Arajin to join the Siguma squad. Meanwhile, Arajin is troubled by Mahoro's absence from class. Senya asks Arajin if he still has feelings for Mahoro, despite knowing her brother's actions against him. But Arajin believes Mahoro is testing him. Suddenly, they hear Marito calling Arajin, prompting him to make a quick exit. On the other hand, Mahoro expresses her preference for being with her brother rather than Arajin. Suddenly, Arajin approaches Mahoro and offers to have lunch with her. At that moment, he apologizes to Mahoro for the fight with her brother the previous day. However, Mahoro warns Arajin that if he hurts her brother again, she'll take drastic measures. She then returns the love stone Arajin gave her, intentionally shattering it. Later, Mahoro attempts to kiss her sleeping brother. But Marito interrupts, striking Mahoro in her chin while mentioning Arajin in his sleep. In the evening, Arajin is troubled as he tries to piece together his shattered love stone. Meanwhile, Matakar is writing a letter to his brother, informing him about Arajin's move to Ichizu High School, and eagerly anticipating his brother's release from prison in a month. The following day, Matakar approaches Arajin in his classroom, expressing his desire for Arajin to join the Minato Kai group. However, Javasiri also approaches Arajin, prompting Kakeru to question his presence. Jabasiri then strikes Kakeru on the head, insisting on speaking with Arajin. Upon seeing this, Matakara challenges Jabasiri to settle the matter outside, and they engage in a fierce fight. Senya, who wanted to see their fight, invited Arajin to watch, but Arajin refused because he didn't want to interfere in their affairs and excused himself to look for a toilet because he had a stomach ache. As Jabasiri and Matakara clash, Senya becomes furious with Arajin for not watching the fight. However, Arajin rushes to support Matakara as he struggles. They fought fiercely with Jabasiri attacking Matakara quite quickly, but Matakara managed to hold him back and tried to step on Jabasiri's head. However, Jabasiri managed to catch Matakara's leg and knock him down, and they ended up headbutting each other, with Jabasiri ultimately being defeated by Matakara. At the same time, Senya and Arajin arrived, seeing that their fight was over. Senya was very angry with Arajin because he couldn't watch their fight. At that moment, seeing that Matakara was about to fall, Arajin immediately helped him. Shortly after, Matakara regains consciousness, and Arajin praises his strength, although Matakara modestly admits it's still just average compared to Arajin's strike against Marito. As Arajin prepares to leave, Matakara promptly invites him again to join the Minato Kai group, emphasizing the opportunity to become Hanki. Senya realizes that Matakara is currently training to become Hanki. 
However, Arajin prefers not to dwell on the past. Hearing this, Madakara urges Arajin to meet Dumin Kenichiro, the leader of Minato Kai, describing him as not only strong but also highly respected. Arajin then eventually agrees to meet Kenichiro. When meeting Kenichiro, Senya senses his formidable strength, and Arajin boldly challenges Kenichiro to a one-round fight, believing that if he can defeat Kenichiro, who is on par with Marito, he won't need to confront Marito to prove his strength. Arajin then urges Senya to join him. Arajin then start darting forward to strike Kenichiro and pinning him against the wall. Witnessing this, Madakara is taken aback and swiftly commends Arajin for his impressive feat. However, Senya voices his concern over Arajin's peculiar desires, while Kenichiro, who has arisen, readies himself to fight against Arajin, eventually tossing him out. After the clash, Madakara tends to Arajin, with the mark of Arajin's blow evident on Kenichiro's abdomen. Surprisingly, Kenichiro confesses his admiration for Arajin. The following day, Arajin complains of lingering pain in Senya, suggests a rematch with Kenichiro, but Arajin declines. Suddenly, Ma Rito enters, extending an invitation for Arajin to join the Siguma squad. Hearing this, Arajin declines, fearing he'd be a burden, but upon Mahoro's plea, he agrees and joins the Siguma squad. Shortly after, Madakar arrives and invites Arajin to join the Minato Kai group, but Ma Rito intervenes, stating Arajin has already joined the Siguma squad, leaving Madakara disappointed. Meanwhile, two members of a gang, called the NG Boys, discuss how Emperor, their leader, harshly punished three members for failing to collect enough money. Emperor himself thought of confronting Jean Marito, the leader of the Siguma squad, and Duman Kenichiro, the leader of the Minato Kai. Both Marito and Kenichiro over here, but are puzzled as to who Emperor is talking to. On the other hand, it's revealed that the Minato Kai and Iki Union groups have long competing for dominance at Ichizu High School. After Kenichiro defeated the Iki Union's leader, Marito absorbed the group, forming the Siguma Squad. Tut informs Arajin that it's time for the Siguma Squad to claim the school's top spot. However, Arajin joins the squad from Ahoro and doesn't want his youth consumed by constant fighting. Shortly after, Marito arrives and swiftly escorts Arajin away. Curious, Arajin asks Jabasiri about their destination, but Jabasiri remains silent. Marido then explains that they're headed to a welcome party for Arajin, and he immediately imagines that the party will be filled with women. On the other hand, several members of the NG Boys gang are seen inflicting harm on someone to collect the money urgently, fearing punishment from the Emperor. At the same time, Marido intervenes, realizing they were the ones behind the recent kidnappings at Ichizu High School. Araji Naslo recognizes them as the ones who chased him before. It's revealed that Sindo Akutaro, expelled from Minato Kai, now leaves the NG boys. Threatening Marido with a knife, they demand compliance. However, Marido easily overpowers one of them and sends him flying, instructing them to deliver his message to Shindo. Upon seeing this, Senyat admires Marido's bravery, and Marido returns a wallet stolen from an Ichizu High School student. After that, Mahoro called her brother and invited him to meet her at the cafe in Hama Bay after finishing his business. On the other hand, Matakara approaches Mahoro to talk, but she ignores him. He then asks Mahoro if she recruited Arajin to the Siguma squad, but she remains silent. Matakara holds her hand, demanding an answer, but Mahoro breaks free after she screams loudly. Meanwhile, Marido informs all members of the Siguma squad that Arajin has officially become a member today and he also praising Arajin's impressive strength. They start the celebration with a game called Don't Look Away, where the winner earns a year's supply of Turkish kebab. They are paired up with the person next to them, and the game begins with rock, paper, scissors, and the victor gets to strike their opponent. Senya observes the others and realizing that it's more of a fight than a party. On the other hand, Java Siri emerged victorious and immediately defeated his opponent. Finally, all that was left was Arajin and Jabasiri, with Marido asking Arajin to get ready, as Marido would be waiting for Arajin for the final round. In the arena, Arajin urges Senya to join him, but Senya believes Arajin has always won because of his support. Just as Jabasiri is about to fight Arajin, but suddenly Auda steps in, volunteering to fight Arajin. It turns out that Auda is the captain of the special attack unit, 
and he always leads the attack when confrontations occur. Knowing this, Arajin fears this could be his end and regretting his decision to join the Siguma squad. Fortunately, Senya eventually agrees to join by Arajin. Tetsuo acts as the referee, and the match begins with rock-paper-scissors, where Arajin loses and Aota prepares to strike him, but Senya quickly holds Arajin's head, causing Aota's hand to crack slightly. The audience is astonished by Arajin's resilience, as no one except Arajin to withstood Aota's punch. Even Tetsudo is amazed, knowing Aota's punch can break concrete, yet Arajin's skull appears stronger. Arajin eventually emerges victorious and Aota, with a reddened hand, requests a break to use the restroom. Next, Arajin will face Jabasuri, with Arajin getting the opportunity to attack first, but he doesn't want to defeat Jabasiri because he wants to avoid Marido in the final. Arajin then gently attacked Jabasiri, but after seeing this, Tatsudo realized that Arajin used a deadly technique that made him the winner. Shortly after, Marido enters the arena, making Arajin fear for his life. Marido admires Arajin's aura, reminiscent of a true Hanki. As they prepare to play rock, paper, scissors, Arajin's stomach starts hurting prompting Tutsudo to halt the match and advise Arajin to go to the restroom immediately. As Arajin heads towards the restroom, he finds Ada lying there, and Tutsudo informs Marido about signs of the Minato Kai gang near Ava. Jabasuri immediately suggests attacking Minato Kai, but Marido disagrees, said that sudden attacks were not Kenichiro's style. In the evening, Tutsudo and Arajin walk home together, where Tutsudo explains that Marido and Ava known as the Kings of the Gods, because since junior high school they often fought. Besides Marido, Kenichiro is the only one who can defeat Ata. At home, Arajin finds Mahoro waiting. She thanks him for joining Siguma squad for her sake. But Arajin feels missled about the welcome party that turning into a brawl and considers leaving the Siguma squad. However, Mahoro slaps him, urging him to defeat her brother and replace him as the leader. She believes that this will enable her brother to leave Siguma's squad and belong only to her. Later, Arajin expresses eagerness for training and asks Senya how to strengthen their bond to become Marido's successor. Senya is deeply moved by Arajin's transformation and begins teaching him to play the flute to synchronize with each other. In the evening, Jabasiri and Tatsudo are seen walking when they spot two Minato Kai members. Jabasiri fueled by revenge, but Tatsudo stops him preventing an altercation. As they pass, the Minato Kai members provoked Jabasiri, leading him to attack them. Tutsudo attempts to intervene, but the NG boys join in, attacking the Minato Kai members. The following day, Arajin has a sports lesson and is tasked to find a warm-up partner by his teacher. Matakara volunteers, reminiscing about their past partnership in elementary school, but Arajin claims not to remember. Matakara is curious about Mahoro's words to Arajin, Knowing that she invited him to join the Siguma squad, a decision that Arajin now regrets as Mahoro asked him to be Marido's successor. Later, several members of Minato Kai inform Matakara that two of their members were being tied up by an unknown person. Upon hearing this, Kakeru assumes it's the Siguma squad's doing. After that, Komo brings his friends to confront some members of the Siguma squad, while some NG Boys members observe from afar. Shortly after, Marido arrives at the scene to find his three members badly beaten and stripped, discovering a defaced photo of himself with Aota. Meanwhile, Matakara meets with Kenichiro, explaining that their injured members urgently need hospitalization due to broken ribs. At the same time, Marido, accompanied by his members, approaches Kenichiro, demanding to settle a matter. He orders Kenichiro to step forward, eager to retaliate. Matakar intervenes to prevent violence, but Marido swiftly overpowers him, causing Matakara to question the sudden attack. At the same time, Kakeru informs Jabasiri that the Siguma squad was initially attacked by Minato Kai members. However, Jabasiri claims that it was the Minato Kai members who instigated the violence, prompting him to strike Kakeru in frustration witnessing Kakeru being attacked by Jabasiri. Komau feels the urge to retaliate but Matakara advises them to remain calm. Marido quickly presents the Minato Kai emblem found near Aota's location. However, Matakara doubts Minato Kai's involvement, suggesting they wouldn't employ such deceitful tactics. Marido insists that if Matakara is certain Minato Kai isn't responsible, he must bring the culprits who assaulted Aota to the Colosseum the following day. 
with failure will be seen as an act of war. On the other hand, Aurajin dedicates himself to training, vowing to defeat Mahoro's brother. However, he recalls Mahoro's warning that she would kill him if her brother got hurt. Seeking advice from Senya on how to defeat Marido without causing facial injuries, Senya suggests targeting his abdomen. Not long after, Aurajin arrives at the Siguma squad headquarters with excitement, but he's met with disapproving stares from the members. Tutsudo quickly pulls him aside and informs him that Siguma squad is currently preparing for a conflict with Minato Kai. Tutsudo realized how serious the situation was, anticipating a brutal battle if Siguma indeed engages with Minato Kai. He also explains that Marido is now focused on settling his matters with Kenichiro. Meanwhile, Matakart and his friends are sharing a meal. Komao then suggests that they should fight Siguma squad, but Matakart doubts Minato Kai's involvement, noting their tendency to fight one-on-one. -on -one. At the same time, Komao notices Mitsukuni's uniform hanging there. It turned out that the uniform belonged to Matakara's older brother, Asami Mitsukuni. In the past, Mitsukuni was the legendary leader of Minato Kai. He emphasized that true warriors never run away and handed over his uniform to Matakara, urging him to fight. Matakara then expressed his desire to honor his brother's memory. Matakara then stepped outside for a moment because he had business to attend to, making Komeo realize Kakeru's missing uniform emblem. However, Kakeru explains that a crow had snatched the emblem while he was drying his uniform. In a flashback, Kakeru is seen reading alone in the park when Emperor approaches him. Kakeru learns Emperor's story, where he was expelled from Minato Kai six months ago. Emperor then invites Kakeru to be friends, but he declines. When Kakeru pushes Emperor away, he retaliates by kicking him and stealing his Minato Kai emblem. In the present, Arajin is walking home when Senya invites him to training again. But Arajin declines, as training is unnecessary if Marido and Kenichiro are set to duel, because when Kenichiro wins the duel, his desires to defeat Marido are fulfilled. Shortly after, Arajin arrives home to find Mathakara waiting. Their Mathakara discusses the impending clash between Minato Kai and Siguma squad, urging Arajin to intervene. Arajin remains hesitant, but Matakara believes that everything is a misunderstanding and asks him to stop Marido. The scene then showing a flashback, where Arajin gives Matakara a friendship stone, expressing his desire for them to become Hanki together. In the present, Matakara returns home to find his older brother still absent, leaving him puzzled and longing for his return. The following day, Arajin meets Mahoro for lunch, expressing confidence in her brother's victory over Minato Kai. He believes that Marido will retire as Siguma Squad's leader, paving the way for Arajin to take over. Unexpectedly, Matakar interrupts and invites Mahoro to discuss about Marido. Arajin then warns Mahoro against getting involved with Minato Kai members like Matakara. Despite Arajin's concerns, Mahoro accepts Matakara's invitation. Suspicious of this, Arajin follows them, suspecting Matakara may be asking Mahoro out. During their conversation, Matakara share his worry about the impending war, urging Mahoro to persuade Marido to stop it to prevent casualties. However, Mahoro refuses as she believes her brother won't listen to her advice, so Matakara suggests she persuade Orangin instead to stop Marido. After that, Mahoro leaves believed that it won't work. Suddenly, Matakara grabs her hand. When Mahoro was about to scream, he covers her mouth. Witnessing this, Orangin faints, startled by Matakara's actions. On the other hand, Matakara was driven by his allegiance to Minato Kai and his vow to his brother to stop the impending war. Later, Arajin is lost in thought when Mahoro approaches, urging him to convince her brother to stop the war. Employing her persuasive tactic, Mahoro successfully convinces Arajin to comply. Eager to relay the message to Marido, Arajin is unexpectedly swayed by Marido's offer of Turkish kebabs, momentarily distracted. Meanwhile, Minato Kai members are eager for conflict with Siguma squad. At that moment, Matakor requests Kenichiro's attention. But Kenichiro insists on retaliating, prompting their advance. However, when Kaikeru notices Matakor's silence, he approaches and reveals the truth to him. On the other hand, Arajin struggles to intervene as Marido proceeds with the conflict, fearing Ahoro's disapproval. Suddenly, Emperor confronts him, demanding he step aside. Annoyed, Arajin prepares to retaliate against Emperor's intrusion. Meanwhile, Kakeru discloses to Matakara that Emperor, Sindo Akutaro, 
was the one who assaulted Ava. Despite apologizing, Kakeru is thanked by Madakara, who decides to confront Shindo directly. At the same time, Emperor's blow knocks Orajin back, prompting Senya to join him. As Emperor attack Orajin, he is surprised with his resilience. Orajin then retaliates, sending Emperor flying, but Emperor rises again, shocking Orajin. Witnessing Emperor's return, Senya suspects Ichiya's involvement. Meanwhile, NG boys prepare weapons for battle until Matakara arrives, seeking Shindo. Attacked by NG boys, Matakara effortlessly defeats them. After looking at the weapons amount, he realized that Shindo's plan was to destroy Siguma's squad and Minato Kai. Shortly after, Shindo appears and greets Matakara, mentioning they have a special guest and he summons Arajin, which surprising Matakara. Arajin then explains he's pretending to be a leader. With Matakara blames Shindo for the war, but Arajin advises him to leave. Despite Arajin's advice, Matakara still wants to confront Shindo, and he attacks Matakara with his whip. But Matakara dodges in counterattacks. Shindo then overpowers him, and mocking him as the second strongest person in Minato Kai loses to him. Witnessing Shindo's kick, Senya is convinced of Ichiya's involvement within Shindo's. Meanwhile, Kakeru is worried about Matakara and tries to call him but there is no answer. Matakara was tied up and locked in a room. Where Arajin approached him and immediately released him, Matakara then questioned how Arajin was related with Shindo and why he is naked. At that moment, when Shindo rises again after being hit twice by Arajin, Arajin is about to hit him again. However, Shindo quickly restrains Arajin's hands. Upon learning that Arajin is still virgin, Shindo invites Arajin to his headquarters to enjoy the company of beautiful women. In the present time, Arajin responds to Matakara's earlier question, mentioning he has a reason for being friends with the Emperor. He questions why Matakara doesn't just give up, since conflicts between Siguma Squad and Minato Kai frequently occur. However, Matakara explains that if the fights are manipulated, then the fight is losing the authenticity. He then inquires why Arajin has changed his mindset from before when he was keen on becoming a Hanki. Arajin then clarifies that he no longer prioritizes that aspiration. Suddenly, Shindo arrives and notices the close bond between Arajin and Matakara. He urges Arajin to come back, stating everyone has been eagerly awaiting his return. The scene then showing their childhood memories when they train together to become Hanki. Suddenly, a group of adults appears and ridicules them. Arajin suggests leaving and ignoring the taunts, but Matakara insists on retaliating. Arajin can only observe from a distance. Eventually, Matakar is overpowered, and Arajin is singled out as the next target. Upon hearing this, Arajin flees in fear. In the present, Arajin urges Matakar to stop mentioning Hanki, because it stirs painful memories from his past. Meanwhile, members of Siguma squad and Minato Kai are assembled, awaiting the impending clash. Mahoro, spotting her brother in the distance, realizes that if he defeats King Ichiro, he will graduate from Siguma squad, becoming hers exclusively. At the same time, Shindo introduces Arajin to his group, mentioning Arajin's affiliation with Siguma squad, even though he fells unfamiliar with the group. Despite Shindo's advice for Arajin to abandon Siguma squad and join them, Arajin expresses interest in learning more about the NG boys. At the same time, aware of the final battle between Minato Kai and Siguma squad, Shindo commands his members to eliminate everyone from both groups or face death themselves. Shindo then swiftly takes Arajin away, explaining their plan to strike during the chaos of the battle. On the other hand, Matakara is lost in thought after remembering Arajin's resignation from his dream of becoming a Hanki. He also reflects on their past friendship and doubts Arajin's abandonment of his dream. Meanwhile, the impending conflict between Minato Kai and Siguma squad unfolds. However, Kakeru instead wants to search for Matakara. Marido immediately opens his shirt prompting Mahoro's immediate captivation upon seeing her brother's body. Meanwhile, Shindo and Arajin stroll together toward the looming war. Shindo is interested by Arajin's earlier conversation with Matakara regarding Hanki. Arajin then explains that as children, they used to play as Hanki. Shindo then inquires if Arajin recently visited a Hanki shrine. Hearing this, Senya promptly urges Arajin to deny it. At the same time, Shindo senses that their bond strengthening, and he wants Arajin as his right-hand man, but he declines due to the weight of the responsibility. 
Shindo then asked again, suggesting that joining NG Boys would allow him to experience intimacy with female members. Arajin, tempted by the thought, imagines it, but is torn by his feelings for Mahoro. Shindo then makes another attempt to sway him, offering Arajin the fulfillment of his desires, just like Shindo's goal of eliminating Minato Kai, Siguma Squad, and Kenichiro. Hearing this, Arajin wonders about his goal to eliminate Minato Kai and Siguma Squad. The scene then showing Shindo's past, where Kenichiro came to help him when he was being harassed by thugs. Seeing Kenichiro in the Minato Kai uniform, Shindo became fixated on joining to gain strength. Eventually, he succeeded, engaging in a duel with his senior and emerging victorious. However, when his senior attempted to rise again and grabbed his leg, Shindo fight back with his weapon. But Kenichiro intervened the fight, leaving Shindo behind amidst a disapproval from everyone. Later, Kenichiro is shown preparing for his duel with Marido and Auta. Witnessing this, Shindo becomes resolute in being the one to defeat Kenichiro, vowing to eliminate anyone hindering his path. Shindo then advises Arajin that women are attracted to strong men, prompting Arajin to accept his offer, determined to prove himself. On the other hand, Kenichiro opens his shirt, causing Mahoro great concern for her brother's well-being. Meanwhile, Kakeru catches up to Matakara and defeats one of the NG boys members. He calls out to Matakara, who, upon hearing a knock at the door, urges him that they need to hurry, as Shindo was on his way to the dual location. At the same time, Arajin and the NG boys gang have arrived, but Arajin wants to go have fun with women because he doesn't want to be involved in the war. However, his stomachak resurfaces. Shindo then informs Arajin that after Siguma squad's elimination, Mahoro will be him. Upon hearing this, Arajin's heart races, and he spontaneously striking Shindo until he falls. Arajin then rushes off in search of a restroom. After the punch, Shindo realizes that Senya is within Arajin's body. On the other hand, Marido swiftly shatters a glass bottle, initiating the battle. Both factions are about to clash, but Matakar intervenes, revealing Shindo's scheme to initiate conflict between Minato Kai and Siguma squad. Kakeru also admits that the Minato Kai armband discovered near Auto belongs to him, taken by Shindo, and he apologizes to everyone. At the same time, Arajin is pursued by NG Boys members with Shindo, grows frustrated as the war fails to start it. Matakara then asks Kenichiro to stop the war, but they both still want to continue their fight, with Marido charges forward, kicking Kenichiro. Moral lesson from the story if you chase after Turkish kebabs, you might end up in a fight between gangs over who gets the last one. It is better to share your Turkish kebab, because you might just end up making more friends than enemies.